the strongest exorcist in the world, Haruyoshi, who had enemies everywhere due to his great power. In the last moment of his life, he activated a spell for his reincarnation. The strongest exorcist was reborn as Seika Lamprouge. Then their father appeared and took Glay to practice magic with him. But suddenly Seika asked if he could come along and so they practiced magic together. When they were practicing magic, his brother Glay provoked Seika, Glay thought he couldn't use magic. So Seika showed his family his overwhelming power for the first time ever, shooting a blue fireball. His family fascinated and couldn't believe it. After that day, Seika got more attention from his father and he learned more about this world full of magic. When Seika turned 11 years old, he wondered if he could summon the powerful Ayakashis that he sealed in the previous life. So Seika opened a gate and summoned Yuki, who was very happy to see her master again. After that to keep Seika's powers a secret, she turned into a little fox and hid in Seika's hair. Seika didn't get a special meal like his brothers, since he was the son of one of his father's loved ones. After that, his brothers wanted to train with Seika and as always, Glay's intentions were to tease his little brother Seika. Suddenly, the family was alerted by maids that a huge monster was coming towards them. Seika faced the giant salamander and finished off the giant salamander with a poison attack. The salamander fell over due to the powerful attack and everyone present was shocked that Seika was able to defeat such a beast. In the evening, his father came back from town and there was a feast for Seika. So Seika took the opportunity to ask his father to let him go to the magic academy. He agreed and Seika also wanted Ifa to accompany him to the magic academy. Seika and Ifa were allowed to attend the magic academy, but since it is a tradition that only one in the family attends the magic academy, Glay should join the army instead of Seika. So Seika was challenged to a duel, Seika accepted the challenge. Glay was full of anger and intended to use powerful fire magic to hurt his little brother Seika, but the spell didn't harm him. After that, Seika created a barrier, causing Glay's attacks to bounce off him. Then Seika used a spell that immobilized Glay and activated a spell that brought Glay to his knees, as a result his brother gave up. When it was time to travel to the Magic Academy, his brother Ruft said goodbye to Seika and wished him a good time at the Magic Academy. The next day, Seika and Ifa had to pass the Magic Academy entrance exam. Then they had their entrance exam to the Magic Academy, where the students have to use their magic. So Ifa used powerful flame magic that unintentionally destroyed the target, so she apologized for destroying the target. After that she went to the next and used wind magic, her magic piercing the stone wall and everyone was overwhelmed by her power. Even Seika was surprised by her teaching herself wind magic. Then it was Seika's turn, everyone thought he would fail the exam and suddenly he used blue flames that no one have seen before. Everyone was amazed at his blue fire and then Seika went to the next target and cast an earth spell, he created a metal that no one knows and destroyed the target with his unknown magic. The teacher didn't even know what was happening anymore and Seika just walked on and he cast water that transformed to ice. When he froze the target, everyone was just confused by him, since all normal students can only use weak magic. In the evening they went to the new students welcome event, but on the way Seika and Ifa spotted something suspicious and found a magic circle. So Seika sought out the boss and he found the demon leader at the previously discovered magic circle. The leader summoned immediately henchmen were rushed towards Seika, but he simply made them disappear with a spell. However, the demon was not impressed and underestimating Seika, he used his sword magic to continuously attack Seika. In doing so, he managed to teleport behind Seika and cut off his arm. Then the demon leader attacked with a strong spell and he managed to sever Seika's head. But Seika wasn't really defeated, he was just playing with the demon, because he is able to revive himself continuously. The arrogant demon was still not impressed by Seika, so he attacked him with powerful water magic. After that, he attacked with an Ayakashi that created lightning. The demon wiped out and managed to kill Seika again, but Seika couldn't be killed while he possessed the paper Hidogatas. Since Seika had all the information from the demon he summoned a powerful Ayakashi that looks like a dragon. Then his Ayakashi devoured the demon and then tried to escape. So Seika used his Haido goddess to hunt him back and resealed the powerful Ayakashi. After that Seika returned to the hall and Ifa told him that the demon henchmen in the hall were all defeated by Amu. All of the other students were horrified by Amu's power and began to fear her. Then in Ms. Karen's class, Amur and Seika were picked to do a school assignment in Lodonia Forest. When class was over Seika told Ifa that he wanted to be friend with Amu, because he knowing how bad it is for her to be praised as the strongest of many while being despised out of fear at the same time. Ifa could now understand his reason for to be friending with Amu and wished him to succeed with his goal. 
So he and Amu made their way to the Lodonia forest and they discovered a magic circle and the two were teleported into a dungeon. Once inside the dungeon, they were immediately attacked by monsters. After that, they searched the way out of the dungeon, while Amu was surprised by Seika's unknown magic powers. Seika was finally able to summon a powerful Ayakashi, and his Ayakashi instantly defeated the dungeon monsters. The two slowly became friends and Amu thanked Seika for the encouraging words and for saving her when she was unconscious. Then they went to the dungeon boss room and both fought a giant cobra that could use poison as an attack but they could easily dodge the monsters and have a chance to attack. The fight went quickly as Seika used a metal spell to distract the cobra, allowing Amu to fire a fireball at him and finish off the dungeon boss with her sword. When Amu defeated the dungeon boss, she was happy to have defeated her first dungeon boss and hugged him. Seika was happy to have made friends with her and Amu blushed. Later on they found a sword and a ring as a dungeon reward, Amu got the sword and Seika took the ring. After that they returned to the school and reported about the undiscovered dungeon trap, but Seika knew that the teacher Cordell was behind all the accidents that had happened and confronted him. Then Mr. Cordell underestimated him and said that he was also the one who cursed the girl and she will die from the curse. Unfortunately Seika had absorbed the curse on a Hitogata and summoned a demon that he sealed beforehand. So Seika was able to transfer the curse to himself and the teacher thought he was crazy because he would die from the curse. However, Seika used his exorcist power and simply sent the curse back to the user, Mr. Cordell. So Mr. Cordell was dying by his own curse and was defeated. Sometime later, Seika having dinner with Amu and Aoife in their academy hall. He and Aoife are suddenly sent from the vice principal to the headmistress office. After that she said that she wanted to send him to a mixed disciplines combat tournament in the capital with another person. So Mabel Crane, who was a new student at the academy, entered the office. The academy was only allowed to send two students to participate, so Seika or Aoife should take part in the tournament with Mabel. When everything was discussed, Amu was angry that she wasn't chosen as she is the strongest in sword fighting. Suddenly, Mabel appeared behind her, hearing everything. She called Amu weak and made it very clear to her that Amu wasn't chosen because being a weakling, she didn't deserve it. Since it was mainly a sword fighting tournament, Amu challenged her. Seika didn't stop the two as he was keen to find out about Mabel's abilities. So they started fighting and Mabel immediately won the fight after attacking and looked down at Amu who was lying on the ground. However, Amu couldn't accept her defeat as Mabel used magic in the fight. Mabel says that her naivety is her problem and also warns Seika. When they arrived, Seika was extremely unwell from motion sickness and he wanted rest until tomorrow when the tournament begins. The next day the mixed disciplines tournament started and Seika got ready with his friends. Seika was the first participant and had to fight an arrogant guy who didn't take Seika seriously, his opponent threatened not to spare him and cut him to pieces. Seika decided to end the fight quickly and let him attack first. He then teleports behind him and attacked him so violently that the guy flew into a wall. Then the second round of the tournament started and Seika faced off against a magician who possessed a golem. She underestimated Seika and thought he had no chance, but Seika summoned an Ayakashi that immediately destroyed her golem. So he immediately made her surrender and everyone thought he had defeated her with a wind spell since his Ayakashi so fast that nobody have seen him. Then Mabel's fight started, so Amu told Aoife that the two should stop flirting and the next fight is about to start. As the fight began, she had to fight an earth mage, in the process Mabel threw several small knives infused with magic at him, which easily shattered his defenses. Since Mabel was using dark magic and using gravity magic to enhance her weapons, it piqued Seika's curiosity. Because when Mabel won, she was dubbed a redhead heroine and Seika asked her friends why she was hailed as a redhead heroine. Through his friends, he learned that the final heroine was also named Mabel Crane, who had red hair and wielded the same weapons. Afterwards, Seika fought a necromancer summoner and qualified for the semifinals against his opponent Mabel. As Seika was walking back to the stands, Mabel approached him because she underestimated him and asked him to retire from the fight against her but he didn't want to when she warned him that otherwise he would die fighting her.